1 through 12. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all of our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. All did eat the same spiritual meat. All drank of the same spiritual drink. They drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. That rock was Christ. But with many of them God was not well pleased. For they were overthrown in the wilderness. These things were our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Neither be you idolaters, or were some of them, as it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day, three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed by the destroyer. All these things happened unto them for examples, and they're written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, this is the key verse, let him take, wherefore let him that thinketh he stands take heed lest he fall. Heavenly Father, yes. thank you for this portion of the word. I ask your blessing upon it. And help me, Lord, to go later in the service to share it in a way that will be clear and precise, simple and easy to understand. May we all get nourishment from it. We want to pause to give you the praise and glory that you are so deserving. Thank you for a wonderful week. Thank you for each day. I feel much better. Yes. Thank you for, for health and all life's many blessings. And Lord, we ask you to be with these that weren't able to be here today for whatever reason. I ask you to be with them. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said. Always a joy to share God's word. Almost like a continuation of our Sunday school lesson. Elroy did a good job. We have wonderful Sunday school teachers. Thankful for each and every one of them to do a fabulous job. Anybody else have a testimony before we start? Somebody's holding out on me. I want to thank the Lord for helping the burn through this operation. God's always good. God's faithful. I know that your husband's burn has been very faithful to God. God's been very faithful to him. Anyone else? Father, next few moments we ask for your blessing, your anointing upon my lips. Prepare our hearts to receive your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. What do you suppose Paul means by this? When he's warning those in Corinthians to take heed, was he concerned about Maybe some of them falling back into some grievous sins that he had forgiven them of. Corinth was a large city. It was great, noted for their trading, but was also full of gross sin. Many there had indulged in many fleshly sins before they were saved. Jesus had delivered these people from their habits of lust and fornication and immorality. So what was the fall that the Apostle Paul was referring to? If we look at the three verses earlier, Paul said, likens our Christian life like a foot race. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run that you may obtain. That's chapter 9, verse 24, just backing up there a little bit. What the Apostle was saying is, I have to run this faith race with a determination. Anybody that's ever practiced or did any running 
those that they don't they, they do this and they won't allow anything to disqualify them because they want to finish the race I have to bring my flesh under subjection those that are involved in the Olympics know what that's like to bring their flesh under subjection <coughs> they have to watch their weight gain because everything that they do it would involve them finishing the race was Paul talking about fleshly sins here? There's another book that talks about running and a race. Just need to go back a little further to a book called the book of Hebrews. Hebrews is situated there between James and Philemon. If you go backwards and then go forwards, you'll find it, the book of Hebrews. I think the book of Hebrews holds the key to this sin that Paul was referring to. Hebrews 12.1 Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. The one sin that I believe has the power to disqualify us from the race and to keep us from finishing is the sin of unbelief. The Apostle Paul was speaking of faith in God. He taught that we were saved by faith. We are justified by faith. We are sanctified by faith. We are kept by faith. We are to live by faith. We are to claim faith. We overcome by faith and we fight the good fight of faith Paul alluded to all this and what he was saying in essence is the light in the light of the preaching on faith is what he was sharing I have to bring every doubt he mentioned under subjection and if I don't I will allow this one sin to beat me and I'll be disqualified and I won't be able to finish the race. I want you to think about something and this brings us to our Sunday school lesson. We're going to go back to Israel. God disqualified Israel. Remember Israel was his chosen people. He disqualified them because of their unbelief. And if he did that, if he, if he disqualified them why should he spare you or me? Because this same sin can disqualify anyone from the race. And we can't allow it to go unchallenged in our lives. And we're to deal with it. And we're, and we're to give it a very final knockdown. And knock it out of our lives so we can finish the race. And Paul shows us that even believers can fall into this state of unbelief. And so Paul takes us back to our fathers to show us this unbelief. Brethren, 1 Corinthians now 10.1. Brethren, I would not that you would be ignorant of what happened to our fathers. What he was saying is our spiritual fathers were the Israelites whom God had delivered out of Egypt. And it's important for you to know what happened to them. And then in the same chapter, he goes on further to say Israel was led supernaturally by a cloud by day and what by night. Remember? A pillar of fire by night. They were led out of many impossible situations with God's wonderful power. They passed through the waters of the Red Sea. They were fed with manna from heaven. They enjoyed meat that God sent them from the skies. They drank water from a rock, a spring of life that represented Jesus. The scripture says that he was that rock. And so Paul was telling us that we need to look at how privileged our fathers were. No one had ever lived under such benefits of the covenant as they did. And God gave Israel everything they needed for them to lay hold of an unshakable faith. But with many of them, God was not well pleased. Look at verse 5. They were overthrown in the wilderness. 
I want you to notice that Israel wasn't brought down by adultery or fornication or homosexuality. But their great sin was unbelief. And I don't think there's any other sin that God hates more. With whom was he grieved? Forty years. Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness, and to whom he sware that he that should not enter into his rest, but to them that believed not? So here we can see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. And I just was reading from Hebrews 3, 17 and 19. I was grieved with that generation, and I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. And so now the warning comes, and Paul is echoing those words to the Corinthians. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Chapter 3, verse 12. What God was saying is, I've given my people every privilege. I have provided miracle after miracle to deliver them from every crisis that they had faced. And whenever the next trial came, they complained and said, God, where are you? Why have you abandoned us? They murmured and complained. And Paul was saying to the Corinthians, You've even had greater privileges than that generation did. You have been given a Savior, Jesus Christ. You have been given the cross and the resurrection and the gift of the Holy Ghost and all the promises of the new covenant. God has provided much more even than the miracles that He had given your ancient fathers. The Corinthians were at the very peak of their blessings. They were enjoying revelation of God's Word as they thought that they had been grounded in his word. Paul said, take heed. You're in danger of falling. Watch out lest you fall as Israel did in spite of all your enlightenment. And then Hebrews chapter 4, 9 through 11 says, There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. Let's labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. You see, the writer here calls unbelief a fall. And Paul said, with no uncertain terms, what about you? You've enjoyed even greater blessings. If you refuse to believe God's word, how much more will you provoke him? So take heed lest you fall into that same example of unbelief as those who've gone before you. Christians today live in the most privileged generation of all time. We spoke about that in our Bible study, remember? Of all the wonderful things that we have at our fingertips today. Who would have ever thought that you could talk on a little box, a little screen? You could talk to somebody on the other side of the world. Hmm? Facebook. You can talk. You can talk to your children on, no matter where they are. Who would ever think that we live in such a day and age? 